Here's something interesting that we may have some common ground on, okay? Um, and wh but what do you think about same-sex marriage? It's a sin. You think it's a sin? So you think it I'm is sinful? A sin. What's that? You think I'm sin sinful because I'm married to a man? Yeah. You do? Yes, okay. you're sinning. You are in a sinful relationship. I don't believe, I actually don't believe marriage can be between two men. So I don't. But you understand, though, Candace, and maybe we're not going to agree on this now. I thought we would. Do you understand, though, that um, the same Bible verses and the same scriptures that are used um, to s call same sex, sex marriage sinful are used to call um, interracial marriage sinful as well? Yeah. Same Bible verses. Hold on. Ah. Deuteronomy 7. Starting from verse 1, when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Jergeshites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites, seven nations greater than and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God hath, shall deliver them before thee, Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Why so? Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter, thy daughter um, th thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his son, or nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son, for they will turn away thy son from following me. So this is the, okay. So the, Verse 4 is the reason why God said this. It's not because of the interracial marriage. It's not because this person is of another nation and that person is another nation. The deeper meaning, the deeper reason for that is because this. Verse 4 says, For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. Um, we know of... A couple interracial marriages in the Bible. Ruth and Boaz is an inter interracial marriage. But this ha Deuteronomy 7 has nothing to do. It, it, it has nothing to do with the interracial marriage being a sin due to the interracial marriage. But the reason why interracial marriage back then was a sin is not because of the skin color or um this nationality and this nationality getting together is because of their belief okay it says that if you do so for they will turn away thy son from following me that they may serve other gods that's the reason why god said not to marry this you know from this na nationality the Bible also says that we should not be unequally yoked. Okay? We should not be unequally yoked. That's the reason why. I don't know why Don... <laughs> Anyways. And so there are people who would say that you are in a sinful marriage. Can you tell me which verse it is that would make people uh, it, the, say? It's, well, it, the thing is, is that it's actually not there. And that people twist the Bible verses. That's my if it's not there, then why bring it up? <laughs> Come on, Don. Don, if the verse is not there, why bring it up? Okay, okay, let's, let's, 10 seconds before that, let's go. And so there are people who would say that you are in a sinful marriage. Can you tell me which verse it is that would make people uh, it, the, say? It's, well, it, the thing is, is that it's actually not there and that people twist the Bible verses. That's my whole point for thank you for proving that because it doesn't say that. And, and it's actually, you're gonna say Leviticus or whatever. It's not actually what Leviticus says, but go on. I don't wanna get into to, you know, specifics about the Bible, but that's not what the Bible says. It's just people uh, using and interpreting scripture in a way that they want to interpret it. So. Okay, all right. So uh, then why bring it up? Like why? Why would you even bring it up? Like you can find biblical basis for same sex marriage being a sin. You can find biblical basis for that. You can, you can, you know, you guys know, you guys should already know. Some of you guys that, that are on here, viewers of this channel should already know that there is biblical backing for same sex marriage being a sin. Okay. There is no biblical backing for interracial marriages being a sin. The only, the only 
basis for that is Daniel 7. But there, the reason why God said that is not because the interracial marriage itself, but because if you marry, usually back then, the Jews are, the, they're just the Jews, right? They're, they're the Jews. And then if you, if you go on to another nation, right? If you, if you, if you hang out with someone from another nation or someone who's different, who's, who's not a Jew, um, what would happen is they would share their religion with you. And if they share their religion with you, being a Jew, there is a possibility, uh, a strong possibility that this person can draw you away from following God. That's the reason. That's the reason. And so if there is no, if he knows that there is no biblical backing for this, why even mention it? Why even bring it up? And then he says, oh, well, people twist this. Okay, well, then people twist it. Why, why bring it up then? That's what's kind of strange to me. Um, but we know that the family is under attack. The family is under, is under attack. The Bible says in Revelation 6, let's go to Revelation 6 real quick. In Revelation 6, at the very end of Revelation 6, um, the kings of the earth, it says in verse 15, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the faith, from the faith. And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Okay? So this is what Revelation 6 says. Before we go to verse 17 of Revelation 6, we know that the family is under attack. The, the family, the family, the original family, man and woman married and now they have kids. That's the original picture of the, of the, of what a family, a true family is supposed to be. Biblical family, right? Um, this family is under attack. This picture of God being a family is under attack. Satan is trying to break the family. Okay? And this is why we have legalized gay marriage, um, which is a sin. We have legalized gay, you know, gay marriage. It's a sin. Um, people are uh, encouraging the, the you know gay marriage uh there are some gay couples that are even knocking at the doors of houses of worship in order for them to get married in that house of worship first of all if you don't believe in god why get married because marriage is an institution that is created by god it's kind of like saying um you know uh, i don't believe in basketball but i'm going to use the basketball to play soccer I don't believe in basketball, but I'm going to use, I'm going to use the, you know, basketball rules for this game that I just created and then pick and choose what rules go with this, you know, with the game. It doesn't work that way, right? If, if you, if you like, if you, if you um, don't believe in basketball, then why even associate with basketball? If you hate basketball so much, or even if you don't hate basketball, you just don't believe it or you just don't like it or whatever, then why, why? Take the rules of basketball and put it and 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 take it and put it in, in in a game that you have created. If you don't like basketball, it's kind of the same thing, right? It's not. I mean, it's not the best example or not the best picture that I'm thinking of. But you guys, I hope um, I hope that you guys get the idea. If you don't believe in God, why take the institution that God originated and make it yours? The 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 marriage, the, the little picture of marriage down here on earth is a picture of the reality of the, the marriage between Jesus Christ and the church. And it's supposed to be male and female. That's why in Ephesians 5 verse 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ, Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. The church is pictured as a woman. In, in Jeremiah 6 and verse 2, it says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. That is God speaking about Israel, Israel being his wife, according to Ezekiel 8, okay, Ezekiel 16, Jeremiah as well, Jeremiah 31. 
according to those um, passages, Israel is referred to as a woman and God being the husband of Israel. Okay, that is the bigger picture of the small picture that is marriage that between a man and a woman down here on earth. The marriage between man and a woman down here on earth is just a small picture of the bigger reality, which is the marriage between God and his church, between Christ and his church and his bride. Okay, so why take this institution and say, yeah, we're just going to, we don't believe in God, but we're going to take his institution and make it our own. Doesn't make sense. And then, you know, do all kinds of mental gymnastics over, uh, you know, the Bible and say, you know, claiming, saying, bringing things up like interracial marriage is a sin. And then, you know, when asked about the Bible verse that the, the biblical backing for this, oh, there is no biblical backing is just misinterpreted you know why bring it up anyway why bring it up in the first place but anyways marriage is under attack the family is under attack just like i was saying revelation uh, 6 starting from verse 15 and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in, and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand here we see a little bit, a, a little clue of why Satan is attacking the marriage and attacking the family and attacking the home. Okay? If you have a guy and a guy in a fe or a female and a female in the home, is it really a, a, is it a true home? It's not a true home. Because if you have a, a, um, a gay marriage in the home, you're not following after Christ. You're not follow, following after the examples of Christ. Christ being the husbandman and the church being the woman. Okay? You're not following. If, so if you're not following after Christ, then you are not Christian because Christian means to follow Christ. Okay? So you're not Christian. Who can then stand? If, if, if a, a gay man and a gay man are married and they, you know, they married or domestic partners and they live in a household together, can they stand? Is that, would that relationship be able to stand? The Bible says, remember, Jesus Christ says that the house divided shall not stand. A man and a man is not to, is to even though that they're in a domestic, domestic, uh, relation, domestic partners, I guess you can say, that household are, th that household is not going to be able to stand because they are not on solid foundation. Remember, Jesus Christ also said that you must be on solid ground. The house that is built upon the rock, that is the house that will be able to stand when the winds are blowing and all, you know, all the storms are blowing. And, and, um, if your house is, is on solid foundation, it's, if it's on the rock, it won't be, it's not easily shaken. It's not easily shaken. It's not easily moved. But the house that is built on the sand, and that's what this whole, the gay marriage thing, that is a house that is built on sand. It is not according to the institution of the true institution of God, which is the true marriage, which is between a man and a woman. Okay. Remember, the Bible says, God, Jesus Christ himself says, the house divided shall fall. It shall not stand. And if you, and the, and the, the whole reason why you can stand is because your house is built upon the rock and that rock is Jesus Christ. If you're in a gay marriage, then you're not built on the rock. That solid foundation, you're not going to be able to stand. And this is why Satan is attacking the family. Satan is deceiving people to not take this institution seriously and they, they they walk away from this i'm talking about the marriage institution they walk away from that institution and they get into um gay homo uh homosexual homosexual domestic partnership 
um, in the home, and that home is not built on solid ground. It is not built on uh, on on solid foundation, and they are going to fall when Jesus Christ comes back. This is why Satan is doing this. He wants us to fall, but there is hope in Jesus Christ. There is hope in Jesus Christ. There are there are many people out there that used to be this lifestyle but they are no longer that that lifestyle and it was because of christ that they shied away they 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 forced they have forsaken that sin candace is right that it, it is a sin but there is hope in christ christ can give you the power to say no to any sin any sin christ can give you the power to say no to any temptation that you have Remember, remember, who is able to stand? Remember, the house divided shall not stand. The house that is built on solid ground, that is built upon the rock, that house shall stand when the winds are blowing and when the storms are blowing. What else does the Bible say? The Bible says in Proverbs 12, I believe it's in Proverbs 12 and verse 7. Proverbs 12 and verse 7 says, The wicked are overthrown. The wicked. By the way, who God also labeled those who are in Sodom and Gomorrah, wicked. It says that the wicked are overthrown. And by the way, another thing, remember what Pe I believe it was, I believe it was Peter that said that Sodom and Gomorrah were overthrown by hellfire. Okay, let, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Sodom and Gomorrah. We're going to do a proof text. I believe it's, yeah. 2 Peter 2 and verse 6. 2 Peter 2, I guess we can start from verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, and, uh, so Noah the, eight, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Remember that Sodom and Gomorrah were condemned with an overthrow. It was hellfire. Overthrow. Now let's go back to um, Proverbs 12 and verse 7. Okay, remember the overthrow. Okay, now let's go to Proverbs 12 and verse 7. It says, The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. If you're in an, if you are in a, uh, a, a gay sex relationship or a gay marriage relationship. If you're in a gay relationship or a gay marriage, are you part of the wicked or part of the righteous? You're not part of the righteous, part of the wicked. The wicked are overthrown, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. This is why Satan is attacking the home. Satan is attacking the home. Satan is attacking the home before the home can even be built. This is what I mean. I mean, Don Lemon and his friend or domestic partner, they're not really a home the way that Christ would think of a home. They haven't built a home yet. They haven't multiplied because they can't multiply. Guy and guy cannot multiply. And that rhymed. <laughs> guy and guy cannot multiply. They haven't even built a home yet the way that Christ would like a home to be. So Satan is att attacking the home before the home can even be built. But there is hope in Christ and I hope that Don Lemon can see that. I'm hoping that Don Lemon can see that Yes, it is a sin, just like Candace says. Candace says that this is a sin. Yes, it is a sin. Interracial marriage is not a sin. Again, that it's it, you, they read that you know passage out of context. Clearly, you saw 
Deuteronomy 7 verse 3, they didn't read verse 4, okay? But there is hope for Don Lemon. It's not too late. There is hope for, for the people that desire to, um, to be with God. And maybe you have, you know, same-sex attraction or whatever. There is hope. God can help us can give us the power, can enable us to say no to our temptations and our sins. If that is a sin that you cherish, God can help you to say no. So you can be in a real, so you can build a real home, a home that is built on Christ, that is on solid foundation, that will not fall, that will stand when the wind blows. And by the way, the winds of strife are going to blow soon. Remember the Bible says in Revelation that there are four angels that are holding back the winds of strife. When that wind, when the angels let go and that wind starts to blow and you are not on solid, your house is not on solid ground, your house will fall, shall not stand. And so I appreciate um, what Candace had to say here. I guess we can leave it at that. We don't have to... We don't have to continue with the conversation. I already know how the conversation is going to go. Don Lemon is not going to um, agree with Con Candace says, but pray for Don Lemon. Pray that, you know, um, that that God reveals himself to him. And hopefully God is, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that God is already trying to reveal himself to Don Lemon anyway, because it is not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, right? And I hope that everybody here said amen. Amen to that. So if you guys like this video, if you guys wish to share this video, please share this video with those out there. Share with your family, your friends, your coworkers, anybody who you know would be blessed by this video. If you guys want to support this ministry, you guys can do so by praying for this ministry and also donating at sfp.center slash support. The links are in the description box below. You guys can support that way because the support that we do get, the donations that we do get from you guys does help us with the documentaries and the videos that we do make. So thank you guys again. All the links are in the description box below. Praise God always. See you guys on the next one. Peace. The debate over pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib is uh, quite a debate. All Christians agree there's going to be a tribulation. You can't escape where Jesus says in Matthew 24, there's a time of trouble such as there never has been coming. Jesus is actually quoting Daniel chapter 12. Post-tribulation means that we're going to go through the tribulation, that Christians are going to be here for that testing, and we're going to have to overcome the mark of the beast. The rapture is simply a calling up of God's people. And while that word is not described in the Bible, the idea of God calling up his people when Jesus returns is described in scripture. So will that event, will the rapture be pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, or post-tribulation? When Jesus Christ comes back, these resurrections are going to be distinctly different. The resurrection of the righteous, followed by later the resurrection of the damnation. We want to find ourselves in the first resurrection, the resurrection of the righteous.